An update to our two on your side investigation as a Western Washington company is once again in hot water with the state attorney general. I spoke with a man who says when he complained about not getting a product, the owner threatened him with legal action. Another snowy day here in the Inland Northwest. Now we have another winter weather advisory to talk about. Your forecast is next. Plus an exciting day for the Bullpup. Students at Gonzaga Prep got the opportunity to speak with alum Ann McLean, who was up at the International Space Station. We'll talk to them about the experience. Welcome everyone, I'm Jane McCarthy. Good evening, I'm Mark Hanrahan. We begin with an update to a two on your side investigation we first brought you last summer. A Western Washington company is in hot water with the Washington Attorney General again. Despite an injunction against Fallen Hero bracelets, consumer complaints continue rolling in, including from a Montana man who reached out to me. The movie American Sniper drew many fans, as did the man whom the movie portrays, real-life American Sniper, the late Chris Kyle. And I've always been a fan of, of Chris Kyle. So Greg Church wanted to buy his son a Kraft International hat, the company founded by Chris Kyle. So when I Googled trying to find one of those hats, Fallen Hero bracelets came up on the internet search. So I clicked on the Fallen Hero bracelet site, and they had a whole a large selection of the Kraft International hats. Church ordered this hat from Western Washington-based Fallen Hero bracelets and even paid for expedited shipping. After a month, still no hat. He contacted the seller, Michael Friedman, a couple of times and ultimately went to PayPal with his concerns. That's when he says Friedman got upset. Then he's hurling insults at you. Yes, threatening to sue me. Friedman wrote to Church, quote, your harassment and stalking make you a disgrace. I'm going to look forward to this civil action against you, unquote. Shocked, Church searched the internet for Fallen Hero bracelets and came across stories I did last summer. That's where I spelled out a pattern of alleged behavior by Michael Friedman, like unleashing a torrent of expletive-filled responses to customer inquiries and routinely sending customers who cancel orders to collections and court. On top of that, the Washington State Attorney General says while the Fallen Hero bracelet website claimed sales benefited veterans' charities, Friedman had not donated any money. And he preyed upon that, took advantage of that trust to line his own pockets. So we took him to court and got an injunction of the court saying, hey, he can no longer engage in this illegal behavior. And we thought that would put a stop to it. Attorney General Bob Ferguson says his office continues to hear complaints from customers with stories of verbal abuse, lack of response, and threats of legal action by freedmen. In light of that, his office sent a cease and desist letter saying, it has recently come to my attention that this office and the Better Business Bureau have received a number of complaints from consumers since the date of those injunctions. The AG is now seeking expanded terms from the court that could limit freedmen from selling any goods or services over the internet. Judges don't mess around with this. They expect their orders to be followed. And if that's not happening here, there's going to be significant penalties for him. I also contacted attorneys for the Chris Kyle Frog Foundation. Attorney David Bowles tells me even without the injunction, Mr. Friedman has no permission to be selling craft or Chris Kyle material, which is copyrighted. Bowles already knew of Friedman calling him, quote, a mass violator. He told me, Mr. Friedman is an outlier. Most folks, once they've been caught and we ask them to take down the infringing work, they take it down. He is not the typical. Since the initial injunction, it does appear the Fallen Hero Bracelet website no longer touts that proceeds benefit veterans charities. And the company's behind-the-scenes name appears to be changed to Hudson Bay Trading Company. Still, the consumer complaints continue. We're just changing the name and keeping the same conduct, that's not going to help him out. Church finally did receive the hat he'd ordered, but was baffled by the addition of a rifle round. That was something you hadn't ordered. Did you perceive that as odd? I did. It kind of set me aback because I thought, what is a, what is a rifle round doing in my package? But he also sent him a bullet. I mean... He sent that to the... Yeah. Can I see? Yeah. 
I assume Dave knows. My, my, does, my, does my team know about that? The attorney general says his team will consider all the new information and consumer complaints. And they'll try to finally impress upon the defendant. Failure to follow a judge's orders is not something they take lightly. Look, no one wants to be in front of a judge facing potential sanctions. That's, that's not a pleasant place to be. And I did confirm with the attorney general's office that they did hear back from Michael Friedman before the deadline. They say he denies violating the injunction and they are still deciding whether they will go back to court to seek sanctions and possibly bar him from selling over the Internet. In a response to a request for comment, Friedman told us in part, I spend all day long in a preschool with my child. Then I come back and spend all night working on the made to order handmade items I offer which no one ever gives me enough time to make and then cheats me out of every penny. I have never made a penny from any item I offer. 99% of the people who complain not only receive their items, but they have never paid me. My business has been absolutely destroyed by the deceitful nature of the American consumer, but I am the bad guy. Mm. So we will keep you posted on the Attorney General's decision. Again, they're going to look at all the new information and complaints and then come to a decision. And to be clear, we're not talking only victims or alleged victims here in our area. It's several states. Right. I initially profiled a woman from Nine Mile Falls, mm -hmm. but he... Uh, he has customers all over the country and beyond, and those complaints have rolled into the Better Business Bureau and the Attorney General's mm -hmm. office from all across the country. So I'm guessing not the last time we'll hear about this. Right. All right, keep we'll us keep posted. you updated. To weather now, we do hope you enjoyed a little bit of sunshine today, just <laughs> a little bit, because, well, the snow has returned yeah, in does, force. It doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime soon either. Let's get straight to meteorologist Tom Sherry with how much snow we could see, Tom. Yeah, we've had one band of snow move through the area. That has now moved to the north of Spokane, so we get some calm weather right now. But we've got another band of snow just to the southwest of us, as you can see, where that's going to track into the area late tonight and in the overnight hours. So a winter weather advisory in effect from 10 p.m. until noon tomorrow. Another two to four inches of snow possible. So some of the snowfall uh, estimates are from today's storm and the one we're going to get tonight and overnight could see three to six inches of snow in Spokane. It looks like it might be on the high side of that estimate, by the way. Coeur d'Alene, three to six inches of snow, four to six up in the OMAC area, four to eight inches of snow in uh, Moscow and Pullman and in the Colfax area and uh, four to six inches of additional snow possible out in the uh, Ritzville area. 25 degrees, that's the current temperature. The barometric pressure is rising now after that one band of snow has moved out of the area, but again, another one is on the way. We look for in overnight here in Spokane, maybe one to two inches of snow, snow early tomorrow morning and then tapering off by the mid morning hours. Uh, we'll look for a daytime high of 32 degrees. The weekend looks dry and cold though. 31 on Saturday, 29 on Sunday. Keep in mind when I show you those temperatures, the average high for this time of year is about 43 degrees. Wow, we're well off the highs. I'll have a look at your uh, complete forecast coming up in a few minutes. Talk to you then, Tom. Thank you. It was a day of high drama on Capitol Hill where President Donald Trump's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, offered some harsh words about the president at a congressional hearing. Whitney Ward joins us in the newsroom with the latest now. Whitney. Good afternoon. So Michael Cohen turned on his former boss when he spoke before the House Oversight Committee this morning. He told lawmakers he regrets the day he first went to work for Donald Trump. I am ashamed because I know what Mr. Trump is. He is a racist. He is a con man. And he is a cheat. Testifying under oath, Cohen said President Trump reimbursed him for payments to cover up an affair with Stormy Daniels. He said during the presidential campaign, Trump knew ahead of time that WikiLeaks was going to release damaging emails about Hillary Clinton. Cohen also claims Mr. Trump lied about plans for a Trump Tower in Moscow, even though he knew about it and directed those plans himself. Now, complicating his testimony, of course, is the fact that Cohen has pleaded guilty to lying to Congress in the past. That brought a stern warning today from the committee chairman. We will not tolerate lying to this Congress. You're about to go to prison for lying. How can we believe anything you say? And to you, Chairman Cummings and Ranking Member Jordan, and the other members of this committee, and the members of the House and Senate, I am sorry for my lies and for lying to Congress and to our nation. I am sorry for actively working to hide from you the truth 
about Mr. Trump when you needed it most. President Trump is at a summit with North Korea today, but weighed in on Twitter saying Cohen is simply lying to reduce his prison time. Cohen reports to prison in May to serve a three-year sentence for lying to Congress. In the newsroom, I'm Whitney Ward. Whitney, thank you very much. In other news, a North Idaho man got quite the surprise at his home near Hauser. He looked outside his window to see a police chase barreling up his long driveway. Turns out it was the end of a high-speed chase that spanned several miles. Creme 2's Taylor Vito walks us through what happened. So this was a chase that ended in a really interesting way, unfortunate for the suspect, of course. So the guy came up this man's driveway here in the uh, Post Falls Hauser area. He'd eventually crash into sn snow burns here, tried to run away, but see this rope right here? He'd run into that and get clotheslined. All right, yeah, I just wonder what the heck was going on. <laughs> Somebody didn't want to stop for the police. Yeah, well, I hope they liked their end result. Hey, how's that for some backyard video? The guy behind the camera phone was Rich Sherman. A little bit surprising and maybe a little scary. This all happened at his place near Hauser. According to the cops, a suspect was trying to outrun deputies, eventually driving up Hollister Hills Road. He came roaring up the driveway and... I sped up this video for effect, but this is where the suspect drove. He went sideways here. They thought he was going to lose it on the ice. Sherman had a front row seat to it all. First thing I did was ran and grabbed my Glock and came to the back door. And Luckily, his property wasn't damaged and nobody was hurt. The driver tried to run away, but he ran into this thing that Sherman uses to block off his driveway from a rear access road. Somehow got tangled up in a rope and tore the sign off of the rope. Talk about cheap home security. The rope served a purpose. Yeah. <laughs> This is that suspect, 32-year-old Eric Blum. It all started last night in Coeur d'Alene when he was approached by cops but sped off. He'd head towards Hayden and then to Rathdrum on Highway 53. Investigators say Blum was going over 100 miles an hour at times. Cops would eventually use spike strips on his tires, but he kept driving for a mile and a half until he got here. Well, it tells me he didn't want to get caught, for one thing. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office says they'll sometimes call off chases like these, but it always depends on several factors, notably safety. But in this case, it was worth pursuing Blum. You know, maybe this will be something that will turn his life around. Hopefully he'll head the right direction. For now, he'll have to think about it in jail. Blum is facing several charges, including eluding and drug charges. In North Idaho, Taylor Vito, Cram 2 News.